Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike Green. I'm one of the owners of 1A Auto. I want to help you save time and money repairing and maintaining your vehicle. I'm going to use my 20 plus years experience restoring and repairing cars and trucks like this to show you the correct way to install parts from 1AAuto.com. The right parts installed correctly. That's going to save you time and money. Thank you and enjoy the video. Okay, little brakes 101. So, you know, maybe you got 50,000 miles on your car and you're wondering, do I need new brakes? Or maybe your car was in the shop and, um, you know, the mechanic put it up on the lift and said, see here, you need new brakes. And he showed you some stuff, but you didn't really know what you were looking at. Uh, well, this video, I'm going to hopefully take care of that for you. Okay, I'm going to show you how these brakes are put together. Um, so that you can identify whether or not you need new pads and rotors. Okay. There's no one mileage for a car. Okay. No one can say, oh, your car has 60,000 miles on it, you need new brakes. Okay. If you drive your car a lot of highway miles, you may go 100,000 miles before you need brakes. If you drive your car around town and you're stop and go all the time, you may need brakes at 20,000 miles. Um, if you've ever seen those people driving down the road and their brake lights are always on, you know, some of them might have a problem, some of them might be riding their brakes, they'll probably need brakes at 5,000 miles. So, um, there's two factors that go in, how you use your brakes and the quality of your brakes. Um, so, no one can just say, well, you've got a certain amount of miles, so you need new brakes. Uh, you need to check the condition and you need to know what you're looking for when you're checking the condition. So, I'm going to take this wheel off and I'm going to show you a few things. Okay, so this is probably what you're going to see. Um, when you when you look at it, a whole bunch of brown and gray, okay. And if you're looking at it at your mechanic shop, um, it's definitely what you're going to see. They're not going to clean anything up for you to try and let you figure out what everything is, okay. But basically, what you have is three main parts. You have your calipers, okay, which is like the arms on your bike when you used to press the handbrake and they'd squeeze the rubber shoes together, okay. So you have your calipers. So those are like the the arms, okay. And then, you can see it move, okay, there's your brake disc or your rotor. That's obviously like the rim of your bicycle, okay. And then between, between your rotor here and this is your caliper is your shoes, okay. And there's a metal part of the shoe and there's a brake lining part of the shoe, okay. And at this point what I'm going to do is go to a new set of, shoe, new set of brakes so you can see the difference between everything better. Okay, so I'm actually now going to perform basically a a brake job for you real quick. Uh, most cars are like this. There's two bolts that hold the caliper to the steering knuckle. And you can see this uses a large Allen wrench. I'm going to put another wrench on here for some leverage. Okay, and then I'm going to pull these bolts out. And then once you have those bolts out, you can use your wrench and pretty much just pry and pull the caliper off. Okay, so you can see the caliper and here's your shoes, okay, which are like the little rubber things on your bicycle. That one pulls right out and then this one basically pull it off like that, a little more force. Okay. Take my caliper, put it up here. On most cars these days, the disc just pulls right off. Okay, some cars you may have a, that may be um, put on with a nut that has a cotter pin in it or something like that. But a lot of newer cars and trucks, the disc just pulls right off. Here's our new disc for 1A Auto. They go on just like the original. And here are our new pads from 1A Auto. Okay, a couple little things. Now you'll see it has a little tab right here. Okay, you'll notice that tab is roughly lined up just, just inside of the metal here. Okay, that tab's a wear indicator. Basically, once these pads wear down, that tab will start hitting against the rotor and it'll make that squeaking noise that you hear sometimes. And as soon as you start hearing that squeaking noise, you know that's when you need to replace your pads. The only special tool you'll need um, is a large C-clamp and you probably actually don't need one this large 
I'm going to use this and put it in uh, to force your cylinder back in. And now you'll see as I tighten it up, this cylinder will go down in. Now obviously you want to make sure you don't damage your line or anything here. Okay, and the reason you need to do the reason you need to do that is because here's my old pad. You can see how much thicker my new one is. Okay, so this caliper had compensated by um, staying out some. Okay, so you have to push it back in so you can fit the new pads on. Okay, so this one okay goes in and clamps in to that bore. Okay, and then this one goes like this. Okay. And then, okay, what I like to do is I put a light knot onto my rotor. Okay, that just helps to hold things in place. Okay, and then my caliper just goes right back on. You can see this hook should go down in there, and this hook should go in if everything's positioned correctly. And this is where it's okay to use a little bit of force and make sure your bolt's all the way out. Okay, and then you get your bolts started, you tighten them up. Okay, so these are your brakes, so you want to tighten these up pretty good. Okay, again, use your wrench for leverage. Make sure your Allen wrench is well in that bolt. Okay. okay, and now with the nice new brakes in, you can see everything really well. Here's your caliper, here's your pads in red, and then there's your disc in between. Okay, and you can see the new pads are a good, you know, between probably three eighths, I don't know, three eighths and half an inch or so. Whereas my worn pads, or about half of that. And quite honestly, these pads still have some life left in them. These pads are still probably worth another 10,000, 15,000 miles. Okay, but now you can easily see, and you know, if somebody's trying to tell you you need brakes, this is what you check for. You want to make sure that those pads have some good life. And you also want to look at the condition of your rotor. Now obviously it's a brand new rotor, so it's nice and smooth. Okay, here is my original rotor from this car and actually if I run my fingernail on it like this I'm not feeling any deep you want to feel for um, deep grooves around it and I'm really not feeling anything so actually this rotor is in good shape too okay. so actually if I had checked these brakes the way they were um, I would have left them alone probably for another probably checked them again about another 10,000 miles Okay, but for illustration purposes, that's what your new brakes will look like. Then you can put the wheel back on um, and go from there. Okay, so that's a little Disc Brakes 101. Um, I hope I gave you the tools you need to check your brakes and see if you need new ones. And also, I hope I showed you how easy it is to actually do these brakes yourself. Um, as you're putting this together, you want to make sure that those bolts are tight. Uh, then put your wheel back on, torque your lug nuts to 75 foot-pounds, uh, put your hubcap and everything belts back on, and you're good to go. Uh, 1AAuto.com, we sell the pads and rotors for many different makes and models, and we hope this helps you out and can save you some money. We hope this helps you out. Brought to you by www.1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Please feel free to call us toll-free 888-844-3393. We're the company that's here for you on the internet and in person.